Well, I suppose we could we could get going if we um, if we wanted. Does um, anybody want to start us off in prayer, or do you just want me to do it? You do it. All right, sounds good. <laughs> All right, well, let's pray. So, gracious heavenly Father, again, we just uh, give you thanks for this uh, beautiful evening and uh, just the great technology that that allows us to be able to gather for a Bible class online. So. We pray that you would just bless our time, just continue to help us uh, see what you're doing through your word um, and these eight chapters that help to explain your story. Um, just continue to guide and direct us, watch over us. Uh, we pray that you would just be with uh, all of those uh, in, in Ukraine and, and around the world that are being impacted by this, um, uh, this tragic news. So we pray that you would just uh, bring a peaceful resolution to that. Um, as quick as possible, just to end the, the loss of life, um, to, to put that to an end. So we pray that uh, you would also bless our Lenten season. Um, just continue to help us to bring people to Christ and grow people in Christ. So we ask this for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, so then we'll get going with our two passages in the and you know again this kind of gets us focused in on on worship and these are interesting uh texts because um they're certainly probably um ezekiel is definitely a lent text and then psalms 116 um we we don't always like to hear these words because it's usually at a funeral or something like that that we talk about these these words, but um, Ezekiel 33, 11, um, somebody want to read that one? Just Go ahead. Say to them, <laughs> as surely as I live, declares the son. No, no, no. I take no pleasure in the what? death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live. Is that it? Right. Yep, that's that's the one, Ezekiel 33, 11. So... What um, <clears throat> what does that bring to mind? I guess when you read that, uh, President Putin, <laughs> Russia, <laughs> the Russia Russian thing going on, and he is you know today he was bomb bombing uh, neighborhoods and and you know, yeah, 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 not it, good stuff. Is is it wrong to pray that that? God will put his heavy hand on him and shake him and wake him. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, was part of an assassination plot to kill Adolf Hitler. So I, you know, I think the, uh, the Lutheran understanding of sin boldly is in, is kind of in that realm. Sometimes, you know, like what uh, Bonhoeffer said is that I, I am, I am justly being, um, killed for my attempted assassination plot on Hitler, um, but I'm doing this because I think it's in the best interest of my, you know, of of my neighbor. So, yeah, unfortunately, war and and wickedness like this certainly um, has its uh, has its play. While we don't, you know, while we while we would still have to recognize that we're living in a broken world and. Um, you know, some, sometimes our thoughts can be evil, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes our actions aren't always real pure, which we'll really get into in the Lenten season. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's a, I mean, that's a, a great question. I think it's one that you always, uh, yeah, Lord, whatever it takes to end this, end this might, you know, thy will be done. I mean, you're certainly could be praying that, you know, that evil ends and, that would mean putting an end to, to an, you know, to a, a, a dictator type of person that seems like, uh, you know, this isn't really making any sense. So, I think you also need to pray for all the leaders because they, uh, if they don't bring this to a, a close before too long, um, it can spread because. Their ally is China, who wants yeah. to take over Taiwan, and a lot of people are ignoring that. And if one works, then the next one comes, and that's that's a reality, I think. You know. Yep. 
Yep. No, there's I, I um, not mm -hmm. as concerned about uh, Russia going beyond Ukraine because of the way that uh, Na uh, at least NATO is, you know, uh, um, that all the countries seem to be coming up to the bar to make sure there are plenty of, of soldiers next to the NATO border. The problem is Ukraine is not a NATO. Mm -hmm. That's it. Anyway, that's, I, I, I should have been quiet. No, no, no. I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how this, um, you know, I don't know how you don't go here. And so hopefully, uh, Psalm 103 will will somehow bring us comfort in the midst of of this chaos that's going on. So, yeah. So, how about if we jump to the next one? You know, Psalm 116, verse 15. And see, this is kind of an interesting thing because we're recording this Bible study, and um, you know, you think about God's word and conversations that have come up from it. So, do you think perhaps in World War One or World War II, or even going way back to uh, the Romans, you know, and their persecution of God's people um, before Jesus came. Do you think maybe Ezekiel 33 verses 1, you know, verses 11 had something to say to them? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's good to know that God's word transcends time. And so you know, this one might even strike us even harder, you know, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So any thoughts there? Well, as we get closer to that end, uh, I, I am, I know that glad that God will be glad to have us there, but it, it's hard on earth to think of the fact that we are, we're losing somebody we love too. Yeah. Or, and and e even though even though it's good, we still hate to see that come for our earthly problem. So, how do you define saints here? Um. Yeah, that's a good question. What What do you guys think? How do you read it? Well, I I think of that in terms of uh, general, not really specific people in sainthood. But there's this distinction. Each of us as believers is really yeah. what I see. But he didn't have believers when he said <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would be interesting to take a peek at the context a little bit deeper on Psalm 116. Um, but <clears throat> since I, I do know that so many people make use of this particular verse during a time of um you, you know during like funeral times and those types of things yeah um to me that sort of lends itself towards um those that have <clears throat> you know those that were believers so you know for the children of god it would have been those who would have considered themselves as part of you know israel either through circumcision or through um you know making that that same kind of confession by you know following you know following the jewish religion or the however you would want to say that um the the hebrew religion at that time like for example rahab you know when rahab um helps god's people you know so so they they would i mean they would have classified her as one of the saints too in that regard be my thought yeah. I always thought it was it was the saints related to those who believed, those who had accept yeah. uh Jesus as their savior. Yeah. That's better put. Yeah. 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 In my mind. Right, and because you know, I mean, we also know that God uh doesn't want anyone to not be in his heaven, right? I mean, he's pretty clear on that that he wishes all would come to the knowledge of the truth, right? And believe in Jesus too. So um, certainly this gets us into that, you know, loving character of God or the heart of God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Well, um, you know, any anything that was a highlight or a 
a challenge from last week. And again, I mean, uh, sometimes we want to focus a little bit more upon, you know, an opportunity that we maybe had to <laughs> have a conversation with, uh, you know, about Jesus with. So I, um, I, I did not have that. Um, I did not have that, although I know, um, I guess a highlight for me in this regard would have been, um, you know, Eunice uh, was talking to a couple of the neighbors and stuff like that. And they were, you know, maybe talking about going walking or something along the lines of that, because they were just expressing uh, concerns for one of the neighbors that was there, you know, so, so again, they, um, they've had good conversations <laughs> and, and uh, it's kind of nice because, you know, two of them, you know, one Eunice and one, the other one, do know, you know, Jesus as their savior. Um, but the other one, you know, does, you know, doesn't, doesn't have that same relationship, I guess is, is a good way to say that, but has been introduced to that. So anybody else? You know, I'm very fortunate to live in a neighborhood who I can point out how many people in this neighborhood at, go to church on Sunday and and uh, have a faith. Uh, and um, so I don't come in contact with too many people, except maybe somebody, you know, if I'm going to go out to eat, you know, uh, trying to uh, be kind and polite to to the the waiters and the waitresses that are so overstressed because there's not enough help. Mm -hmm. And um, we always offer uh, Karen at uh, the Big Biscuit um, or Jennifer, uh, anybody, do we need to pray for you today? Do we need to include you in our prayers? And so we've reached out to to that whole group of, of uh, special people there at the Big Biscuit and often have prayed for them for, for issues that they have. So maybe that's that's the way to that we have done something yeah that's awesome that's awesome yeah that's a lot of times that you know Eunice and I find that same kind of thing too it's just like you know sometimes you can in, engage in that conversation and that's why I always like that one it's like um I, I think you probably have heard me say it before but it's it it's uh, something you know Sydney and I picked up at the Memphis conference it's like what do you need God to do in your life right what do you uh what do you need God to change in your life or something along the lines of that you know just in asking for a prayer i've i've like i said i've i've had a lot of different responses um but i think mostly have been kind of like what you're saying Diana that just you know I mean, like that one time that just always blows me away is that the waitress says, what? Well, I got to drop this ticket off. I'll be right back. And she sat down with me for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Not very often that people are open to that or open to that opportunity. But mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, after you did that, then I had gone to the Longhorn for, for lunch. And I I said, is there anything I can do to pray for you today? And she goes. Yeah, this is this is the my first year. My sister and I we lost our dad this year. Oh, and this is our yeah. first Christmas without him, and so she was so appreciative. You know, the thought that somebody cared. Yeah, yeah. Nope, exactly. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing. All right, cool. Well, um, yeah. I mean, anybody else have anything? All right, it, so it, I don't know. I, I think I kind of dropped the ball because if I wrote down an I will statement from the last session, I lost track of it. Um, so, so again, I don't know if anybody had one that they wanted to share something with, or um, maybe my I will session this, this week will be that I will do my I, I will statement next for the next session <laughs> on the 15th. <laughs> so. Well, I had on my list, I would be more faithful about contacting people who are, are stressed because of various things and, you know, get on the phone and take the time to do that. It's time consuming, but there are people who are hurting because of all kinds of different things, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. I talked to a guy 
today that I hadn't talked to in well, probably 20 years. <laughs> wow. You never yeah, know and that, you know, because mm -hmm. when people are hurting, I think that that's a time that, you know, there's an opportunity. Sometimes you don't really realize it, that they you may or be uh, kind of sort of doing some evangelism in kind of a real roundabout way. And yeah, uh, you know, many, because back here at one of the things I got is caring from last time, you know, you should be an example in caring. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And anybody else have anything? I didn't know that I was supposed to do that since I missed the last one. <laughs> <laughs> but well, we get the, another chance at the end. <laughs> on the other hand, um, if I know somebody is having an issue or are having somebody who is ill or are um, such as one of the people in, in Bible class this morning, she um, she's frustrated with her granddaughter. And so I reached out to her and and talk to her about, um, you know, having, just being patient with her and understanding and knowing that her granddaughter is the one who's going to have to make the changes and that we can't really fix it. And uh, so many of us try to fix uh, and say, okay, this is what you need to do. And this, this will make you stronger in your faith. And we can't fix that when they become adults, they have to make that decision and you can encourage them and pray for them. And that's about it. Yep. Yep. That's kind of the, the, um, Ash Wednesday message, right? Um, <laughs> I we got to let go of control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just got to let go of control and let Jesus be in control. So yeah, I yeah, that that's hard for a few minutes. Gives <laughs> <laughs> four other directions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, which... it's it's much easier to let Jesus be in control when He's doing it our way, right? That's right. <laughs> well, I just think He needs my input sometimes. I guess. <laughs> but that's that's prayer, right? Yep. So He's all that's over. <laughs> And I said, okay, <laughs> your will and God, your will. <laughs> and then right. a couple days later, I'm saying, but God, did you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Could you please write me a message in the steam on the mirror or something? Let me know. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. All right, well, good enough. And then, um, yeah, if, if uh, you know, it's especially important. I mean, we always think about these kind of things is, if, you know, if there's anybody else that you think needs to be in the Bible class, you know, just invite them and and of course when we um you know tighten these things up again when we you know get get more into meeting or even if we decide to you know tackle or take somebody through this ourselves it's um a new person's always going to probably have a bigger pool of people to and to invite to something like this you, you know what i mean that's just that's just naturally how a church grows. It's it's kind of like when you find a new restaurant that you really like, then you tell your friends about it and then they all are going to try it too. And so um, same is true in, when it comes to something like this. So, yep. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let somebody read that new lesson, the introduction. Um, so if, if somebody wants to read like uh, the first two paragraphs, that would be great. After the children of Israel entered the promised land, they experienced a time of prosperity. This prosperity led them to forget to worship God and brought about times of great struggle as God disciplined them for their disobedience. God's appointed representatives led the nation until the people requested a king. God selected Saul as their first king and David as the second king. 1000 BC. King David was called a man after God's own heart and he led the nation to follow the Lord. David wrote many songs called Psalms that praised God for his loving care for his people. Today, we will look at one of his songs of praise 
There are many people who think God in the Old Testament is harsh and judgmental, while God in the New Testament is more loving and kind. So let's read this psalm to better understand God's eternal character and nature. All right, very good. And then before we read it, because um, this, this sort of introduces us to one of our Bible study methods. So if you look towards the end of your, uh, you know, of the, the question or the, the lesson itself, we're given the three questions, right? So question one, it says, notice, um, what do you notice about the passage? What is interesting or what stands out to you? And for those of you that kind of kind of been in the Bible class before, um, we put like a little question, like an exclamation or a little star by this, I think is right. Yeah, a little it's star. A star. Yeah, it's put a star, star by it. And then consider what don't you understand? You know, what questions do you have in the passage? Then you put a little question mark by that. And then if there's something, the third question there is, uh, what should you do or what can you apply to your uh, life from this passage? And again, I should move this down and just show you if I, I wish I had my mouse because I'm afraid I'll skip a bunch, but there there are the questions. You've probably seen them now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So then the, the obey part would be kind of like the little arrow that you would draw. This means I'm going to follow this kind of thing. So. So kind of like uh, what Norm was saying, he he found uh, uh, the the care thing as part of that verse, and so we can look for that, you know, in here for us tonight too. So, all right. So does somebody want to take uh, the first paragraph there, uh, like verses one to five? I'll read it. Let all that I am praise the Lord with. My whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things that he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. All right, good deal. And then um, some, somebody else want to take that next paragraph? The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed this character to Moses and to the deeds of the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, uh, wait a minute, cause yeah. us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all the sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve for his unfailing love toward those who fear him is a great as the height of the heavens above the earth he has removed our sins as a as from us as from the east is from the west very good and sydney you want to take that next paragraph i'll take the next paragraph the Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wildflowers. We bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone, as though we have never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children, of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. All right, and then I'll finish it up. The Lord has made the heavens his throne. From there, he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans. Listen for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, let for everything that has, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom, let all that I am praise the Lord. All right. So <laughs> we moved out of the questions. Um, so on question one, and, and again, I know we kind of moved through it pretty fast. And so maybe you would, in a, in a timely way, or if you were in person, you just maybe would read it quietly. <laughs> I, I know we do that for Bible class. We kind of read through it and people can star something or put a little question mark by something or put the little arrow. But, um, but yeah, what, what, um, 
what came out, what came out or struck out, stru stood out to you in this passage? That the Lord's compassionate in my mind. You know, that, and he forgives the sins. He isn't, uh, if he'd been really ornery, he'd have gotten rid of David a long time ago. Because he's a <laughs> sinner, you know. He's, uh, he's sinned probably more than anybody on this that's here today, tonight, you know. I think something that, that stood out to me, too, was that he just, nor remain angry forever. You know, I don't think, I don't know. I never quite considered that in the form of God being angry and not remaining angry. I just thought he's displeased with us, but, um, and I know he showed anger at, you know, the money changers in the temple and all, but um, it, it reminded me of, as people, if we get angry at somebody, we need to remember that we're not to stay angry at them forever either. It just sort of, I don't know why it hit me that way, but I, I thought, oh my. You know, I never thought of God as remaining angry at us forever. I think, I feel that he's more just disappointed in us. And, but he forgives us as long as we love him. And, yeah. you know. Yeah, and you know what I mean? A, a lot of times, especially if you, like I said, it's always good to just stick to the, to the Bible verses that we talked about. But of course, you know, you guys have read the Bible quite a few times i'm sure and you know quite a quite a few stories um and so you, you know i mean if somebody was especially to be hung up with that with you know well how do i know if god's angry at me or not angry with me um you know because there are some difficult things like i i would remain challenged a little bit with um like when david and bathsheba and then their firstborn and then you know that that baby actually dies, you know, so it's, uh, and, and you find a very interesting reaction on King David's part is that he was fasting and mourning and fasting and mourning. And then once the child died, then he got up, got himself cleaned up and went back to being, you know, the, the normal of what he would normally do day to day. And I think a lot of people, you know, the text, you know, kind of says, a lot of people kind of found that as odd behavior, but, you know, King David said, well, you know, what, what, why more now? I, I mean, why be in distress and prayer now? I, I can't change anything. He's gone to be with the Lord and I will go to be with him again, but he's not coming back to me. So, so, you know, it's kind of an interesting uh, scenario that happens there. And so to a certain extent, David certainly attributes that taking of that child to his unfaithfulness and murder and those types of things you know he he attributes that to punishment um but at the same time he holds on to the understanding that he has of god that that god forgives and loves and forgets you, you know what i mean and and so you know when you think about king david writing a psalm you kind of got to think about this one as is is one after the fact, right? One that's uh, that he wrote after he had done all the bad things. <laughs> so, yeah. I think that's uh, <clears throat> it's important to be able to do that. Yeah, I think we'd have a lot less problems in our society if we would um, <clears throat> be more compassionate about what um, and rely on not hold grudges forever because if you want to you can hold grudges against forever you know and it doesn't doesn't do any good and it, i don't think it is correct i don't think it's correct with god right right goodness knows i hope he i ask for forgiveness all the time yeah <laughs> you know right i mean and and again we I mean, how do we start out every Sunday, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah.
All right. Any, anything else that anybody noticed? That, that's a good one. I like, I like that. I think one of the things that just struck me about the age is because of my age, I guess, but like wildflowers, we bloom and die. And I thought, gee, wildflowers. <laughs> <laughs> We're just here and gone. <laughs> yeah. On this earth. And so one of those things we worry about what people think about us when then we don't, when they don't. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. been here yeah. yeah yeah diana did you have one too i was just going to say that that the 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 sentence that says his salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant and of those who obey his commandments so his his love is not only for us but for our children and those after as you know if they remain faithful that he's going to be there for everybody and not just for for a few um mm -hmm. so it's up to us to be able to to share our faith with other people and with children and yeah and children or godchildren whatever you you know and your nieces and nephews yeah to do those things yeah you know and i um one of the because because these are sometimes some tough things that we face in scripture and i think we had one even what the last maybe maybe even before i don't know that he's mixed up in my head but i know that you know others have asked these kind of questions before too or at least you know that kind of comes out um but but one of the one of the interesting things that I always uh, remember, um, Darlene Stevens, I, like you guys remember Darlene oh, Stevens, yeah. maybe? Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, I always remember her, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I pray for my Frank, you know, because that was her husband. And, and so, um you know, and she, he, Frank didn't know it, didn't hardly ever go to church. Right. So, and right. she was always, but she would always go back to that, you know, that passage in where St. Paul was, it, which is a little obscure, but it, it talks about, you know, a wife being faithful and that will save her husband. <laughs> and so she, she latched onto that. And, um, you know, the interesting thing is that, you know, Darlene, I did her for funeral, obviously. And then then her her kids wanted me to do Frank's funeral, and um, I you know I had not I I saw Frank a couple times in the hospital, uh, but never really had you know much conversation with him. But it was interesting just by you could tell by the people that he had around him at his funeral and the things that were spoken of, you know about that. Um, you were kind of like, yeah, all right, well, he, he didn't go to church. I, I get that, that he didn't go to church. Um, but, you know, it, it, it did seem like he had a pretty, it seemed like he had been influenced enough, though. <laughs> so I, I, I was no doubt in my mind whether or not he um, had at least heard the gospel. I don't know how tightly he clung on to it, but, you know, that's, that's all in God's hands. And, and, um, you know, King David is a is a great example of somebody that you know reminds us that we're not uh, we don't none of us gets in by our works anyway. So it's all Jesus. <laughs> so if yeah. and we can count on him. Yeah. Any other any other comments on that that side of the that number one question or or if anybody has something on two, like what questions, what did, you know, what don't you understand? Cause I think that's always going to be, you know, and I always want to remind people when we get to something like this is if you're, you know, if you're, if somebody asks you a question about the Bible and I try to, I try to model this a little bit um, because like a new person that's studying the scripture, if we just come off as the expert all the time, then they may think that they can't really handle the scripture, you know, that, that this is going to be beyond them. 
And we want to give them confidence to do that. So, you know, whenever somebody would ask a question about something, you know, I try to kind of either say, well, what is, what does someone else in the group think? Or give that person, a, you know, an opportunity to say, well, what do you think? And, and the other thing about that is that a lot of times people look at things from different experiences in life. And, and not that, you know, scripture has a lot of different interpretations of some passage, but it certainly hits some people differently than what maybe that what it would hit me, if that makes sense too. And I think it hits you differently at different times. I can read the same scripture that I've read for many times, but something in my life brings it more meaning, makes it more meaningful to me and brings to light a, a portion of it I didn't think about. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> understanding that I didn't have or something. Right, right. Yeah, one of the, uh, I think it was one of the, um, oh, what do they call it? Illustrations that Dr. Lessing used in the uh, Lent series um, was uh, Lucy was struggling with memorization of a Bible verse or something like that for her Sunday school. And then she made some, some kind of comment that this must be from the book of re-evaluations. And, and so, <laughs> yeah, so that's what Dr. Lessing said. Well, yeah, well, that, that is scripture, right? Because, you know, every time we read it, we should be re-evaluating, you know, our, our understanding of this particular passage more so of, are we truly understanding it the way we need to? <laughs> so. And yeah. I think as your life experiences change, you that reevaluation needs to be done because you need to go look at it again because you know it's not it doesn't it's not easy. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, you got family issues, you got temper issues, you got neighbor issues, you got you know, it just goes on and on and on. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody else done anything on that? I just was re looking at this again, and verse 10 says, he does not punish us for all our sins. <laughs> I noticed that. And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I thought I, thought I was accountable for everything that I did wrong. <laughs> well, you'll have to start your own list, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think I could... I have enough paper for that. <laughs> uh, but then he says he has removed our sins as far as from us as from the east as from the west. Right, so, right. And then I think about the thief on the cross. And I think, well, there's a good chance for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He never went to church. He never, he never, <laughs> till the very yeah. end. Yeah. And again, you know, that, the Hebrew poetry is is beautiful in the sense of, you know, like if I was going to understand it, you're building the case, you know, it, it builds. So it's like one thing and then it's up to the next thing. And then the, the final thing is, is the he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. So it's, you know, what I mean, so it's almost like a it's like a building block of of goodness here's a good example if you look at psalm one you know blessed is the man who does not um sit you know doesn't stand in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers or um basically makes his camp with the with the wicked right so these are the these are your phases of where you're at so you know you really talk about reevaluation. have you been standing with the sinners have you actually been sitting with the scoffers and, you know, far be it that you've actually, you know, put your camp in there with the evil people, <laughs> you, you know, so it's a progression kind of, you know, thing um, that, that Hebrew poetry kind of likes to, to, to use. So, so yeah, Diana, let's start with verse 12 when we want to start figuring out which sins God's going to actually punish us from, <laughs> because, you know, we don't really want it. We really don't want to be treated fairly on any of them. <laughs> so. uh, you know, we were talking about that this morning about uh, getting into heaven. And I said, 
you know, all I really want is, you know, if I'm out in the country in the grass, that'd be fine with me as long as I make it. <laughs> exactly. Better be better to be a doorkeeper. That's right. right. Yeah. Right. Well, good. Yeah, good. Uh, any anything else that we find? Uh, anything else that you see that's? I mean, it's a great Bible verse or chapter, obviously, and you can kind of see why this. Um, you know, sometimes you could look at this and you're like, well, why is it just these eight? And then, you you know, you can also kind of see um, these these are not a bad eight chapters to look at to tell God's story, really. So, I mean, there's a lot of gospel in this story here, and we haven't even got to Jesus yet. So, <laughs> yeah, anything else that stands out, you know, there? Because really, if we move down, I mean, it's the the obey aspect of it. Um, you know, you can you can fill this kind of out on your own. Um, you know, what what should you do or what could you apply to your life from the passage? And then write the statement below of what you will do as a result of this Bible study today. Then share this with one another. I will, you know, blank, blank, blank. Well, does anybody want to close this in prayer? And we can also pray for Rochelle. I'll say it. Okay, sounds great. Thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to, to share uh, your love with other uh, fellow Christians, and thank you for blessing us with this Bible study. Please especially watch out for Rochelle. Um, she's very independent and strong-willed, and it's been very difficult for her to uh, accept her limitations and what she can and cannot do these days. Please give her that uh, special understanding to know that she's going to have to take some time to do, to do what they say and uh, grant her quick healing. And please be with Bill. He is. This is the first time in the longest in a long time that he has been without Rochelle for any length of time. So please watch over both of them. In your most holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.